afraid, man, it's just better to go that route. Amen. All right. Um, Mr. Ben, will you sing a special for us and I'll jump in the message? Amen. <laughs> you can eat your mince bread, Jim, during church. Okay, good. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> hurt and pain when I had gone astray. He wanted to discourage me as I walked along my way. Well, he said, you're unforgiving, cause I know where you've been. I have a record of your life when you were bound by sin. So I told the old accuser, and this was my reply you're right for all the things i've done i sure deserve to die my righteousness is filthy rags and my goodness is unclean if there's just one thing left to say for what he's done for me and it's under the blood, oh praise his dear name. Yeah. I'm not what I used to be, my life has been changed. Not shackled by sin and shame, it's already gone. I'm happy reminding you it's under the blood. Victory was given me when I was born again. He washed my stain and sinful past and put new life within. No longer do I bear the mark that sin has left on me. With happiness and peace of mind, praise God, I now can sing. It's under the blood, oh praise his dear name. I'm not what I used to be. My life has been changed, not shackled by sin and shame. It's already gone. I'm happy reminding you it's under the blood. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete for I'm saved, for I'm saved to the uttermost. I know that I am cause I'm washed in the blood of the precious lamb through the Father and through the Son and through the Holy Ghost. I'm saved to the uttermost through the Father and through the Son and through the Holy Ghost. I'm saved to the uttermost. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Ben. Amen. I'm glad to be in the house of God tonight. I enjoyed the missionary questions. I enjoyed the singing. I enjoyed the special. We turn to Matthew chapter 6 and 1 Timothy chapter 4. Matthew chapter 6, 1 Timothy chapter 4. I don't know if I've ever... I, well, I shouldn't say ever. I can't remember the last time I only had two pages of notes. Jimmy, I'm going to have to really stretch this out. You know, I, I know preachers personally that, that believe that you have to have, a, a, you know, at least a 45-minute message or just so, so they would literally stretch it out on purpose, literally, just to they feel like it was with oomph, you know. Uh, amen. I'm, my, I, I, my goal is a 30-minute message, and I seem to always just be like 33, 34. My goal is always 30 minutes, and if it goes longer, that's fine sometimes. Uh, I was a little proud this morning. Rachel said it was 31. I was like, oh, I almost, I almost hit that. Amen. Here in the text, Matthew chapter 6, Jesus, he's, he's healing people, and he's doing miracles heavily at this point in, min in his ministry, and so much so 
that the peoples are just the, the peoples. The people are just following him from place to place. Big crowds. So much so that Jesus went up into the mountains to be alone with his disciples. And while they were alone, he began just teaching just the disciples. On a side note, they weren't in comfortable gray chairs that are just so comfortable. They went up in the mountains, they're like sitting on the dirt and rocks. But I would gladly do that and hear from the Lord. That being said, we could be sitting on the floor and we'd be so thankful to be here tonight. Amen. In the midst of all that he was teaching, in the midst of all of it, and you can look through the context, right in the middle of it all, Jesus stops enough to tell them how to pray. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, Jesus says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is written in heaven. As, I'm sorry, as it is in heaven. I got notes next to the verses. I apologize. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Brother Jim Vipon, would you open this message in a word of prayer, sir? Jesus is laying out a model prayer here. Any, no, I can, I can, I can say this boldly. I believe that any serious student of the Bible could read what Jesus is saying and understand that Jesus isn't saying, "Hey, repeat these exact words after me," but that this is a model prayer. It's often called the model prayer. But, but, but. What do we have? We have denominations that say repeat these exact words. And that's the classic, con the classic trap of whatever the authority in the church says we'll do, you know, as opposed to actually reading it for ourselves and understanding what Jesus is telling us. What a difference. Well, what a difference. Um, but God laid out this nice example. Um, I, and this particularly isn't the message, but I just want to get this point across clearly. I'm going to read this and point something out. We'll take a step back and look at this. In verse 9, it says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Those first two verses, that's all worship and praise, thanking God for who he is. All worship. The next line says, Give us this day our daily bread. Man, that's talking about praying for provision. The next verse, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Well, that's talking about forgiveness. You know, not only for us, but that we can forgive other people. And then the last, he says, lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That is direction, asking God to lead us where we need to go. So God lays out, here's a model prayer. Here's worship and provision and forgiveness and direction. That's a pretty good prayer. Right. Not these exact words. Paul had something to say about prayer to young Timothy. And remember, we've been going through um, um, 1 Timothy uh, in our Sunday school, we, we I feel like I hit that on Wednesday, too, for some reason. I don't know why it's heavy in my mind. But, uh, right, the, the verse Timothy, that's, that, that's like the pastoral epistles. It's, Paul's writing to uh, young Timothy as the pastor of the church at Ephesus, was it? And so, so these are things that are happening and that he's in giving, giving, Paul's giving Tim encouragement with issues that they're dealing with in the church. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Then the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to, to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Are we in the latter times? Yeah. Did Paul think that uh, Timothy was in the latter times? Yeah. So if Timothy, uh, I feel like I should say Pastor Timothy or something. I, amen. But if he was in the latter times, I think we're in the latter times. Amen. 
speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. We could just stop right there. And we could say God, uh, God created meats to be received with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. If a vegetarian wants to be a vegetarian, that's great. Maybe somebody wants to do it for health reasons for a time. That's great. But it is biblical that God said, hey, here's meat that I gave you for provision. That is actually biblical. Amen. Verse 4, for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. What a statement that is. The Jews cannot grasp, uh, they, they can't grab hold to Jesus because they're holding so tightly to the law. Because if they were to let go of the law, they'd have to hear and adhere to what Jesus has to say. And all of a sudden, they can eat anything. And, well, we've got to stick to the law, regardless of what the Son of God has to say. Amen. And you say, well, that's just ridiculous. I, I know, but in the same way that some denominations cannot step back and look and see what Jesus is saying they got to look to the letter of the law, exactly what it says. Jesus said, pray in this manner, so that's what we'll do. Y'all, take a step back. Look what Jesus is saying. Get the context. You know, if the Jews in general back then and even still today would step back and, and, and say, was there anybody in all of history that ever, ever fit uh, uh, um, Isaiah 53? And we just picked that one chapter, let alone any other ones, and all of a sudden they would have to acknowledge and say, oh, my goodness. The Son of Man did come. But they're so focused, hyper-focused on the one thing. You say, well, what does that have to do with praying before meals? Well, that's a nice one, Rachel Ann. She does such a good job with that. And Aaron's been doing a great job too, amen. <clears throat> what does that have to do with praying before meals? Turn to Luke twenty-two nineteen. I'll be there in a moment. Because there are Christians that pray before every meal thinking that God has commanded us to. I always thought that that was a command that we had to do. Just like the Christians that recite the model prayer word for word thinking that God has commanded us to do so. We are not commanded to pray before meals. We're in the same way we're not commanded to tithe. In the same way we're not commanded to go to church on Sundays. We're not under specific commands like, like, like in these others in the Old Testament, God giving it to the Jews. These are not commands. However, and that's a big however, we recognize principle that God, principles that God has laid out for us so clearly. Um, Jesus gave thanks. Look at Luke twenty two nineteen, 19. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it. He gave one to them saying, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Boy, we haven't done that in a while, have we? I need to put that on the schedule. I've been so focused on this project. We haven't done Lord's Supper in a while. Amen. Jesus gave thanks. And, and I just want to point out, he, Jesus gave thanks. That was just with the disciples 11 or 12 whatever that was more of a private setting just throwing that out there look at Matthew chapter 15 verse 36 I love that there is almost no pages turning because we have it up there that is so cool we have an awesome media lady Matthew chapter 15 verse 36 this is Jesus here, and this is the feeding of the 5,000, or probably the feeding of the 20,000, but amen. amen. Uh, and he took the seven loaves and the fishes and gave thanks and break them. and gave to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. Can we just point out for a moment that Jesus gave thanks uh, before the meal, both publicly and privately? That's significant. I mean, we're not even talking about Paul, and we're not talking about Peter, we're talking about Jesus. I want my children to do things that I do, the good things that I do, <laughs> right? So we try to lead by what? Example. 
we turn to Acts chapter 27, verse 35? I would hope that when you go to the restaurant, you pray. Not belligerently, you know, dear Lord, pray for the lost in the restaurant, <laughs> you know. But I also hope that you're not going, okay, dear Lord, thank you, in Jesus' name, thank God, in Jesus' name, right? right? Um, I make a point to pray out loud when I have, well, if I have at least one other Christian with me and we're in a group of people at a, at a table at work, if I'm the only Christian, I'll pray to myself. But if I know there's another Christian with me and I almost always have one, because I know he don't like to pray. He's just so embarrassed. But I'll say, oh, hey, let's pray, guys, and we'll pray. And, like, just thank you, God, for being a good God. Thank you for the safety we've had at work. You know, pray for something going on today, you know. Then, we, then I'll say, give us this day our daily bread. No, I'm just kidding. But I'm not ashamed to pray at the restaurant or out loud. I mean, it, it is an absolute opportunity to be a witness and a testimony to honestly at least a third of the restaurant. All the people around you are going to know if you're praying. They're going to know if you're being heidi about it. They're going to know if you're being belligerent so everyone can hear you. It goes a long ways. It is not often where I see or hear somebody pray at a restaurant. But when I do, it is so encouraging. It is so encouraging. Amen. Paul here, he prayed before he ate, but can, can I, I just need to point this out. Um, this wasn't just like... Paul with some people praying. This is on the ship. They're like thinking that they're dead. This might be their last meal. They're, 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 I mean, you talk about an inconvenient time. Paul, I think, is still in shackles at this point in the context. I mean, Paul prayed before he ate in the most scariest of times. Um, the, 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 they knew, Paul knew that he was going to survive, but they didn't know how he didn't know. He might take a beating to get there, you know. He didn't know how much of life he's going to have. Look at this, Acts 27, 35. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. We are not commanded to meet on Sundays to worship. But God gave us some very clear principles to do so. I mean, we hit that a couple of Sunday nights ago or a Wednesday. We preached on that. Why we meet on Sundays. Amen. We honor Jesus by meeting on Sundays. Amen. We're not commanded to tithe, but boy, there's some clear principles to do so. God's laid it out from Genesis uh, almost, I think, at least to Hebrews, maybe Revelation. We're not commanded to pray before we eat, but God has sure given us some clear principles that we should. We really, really should. Where the rubber meets the road, the, the truth is that you're going to have no problem at all obeying any principle that God sets forth through Scripture. If we love the Lord and we love His Word, we're going to say, you know, what, what can I learn from this? Uh, not just the chapter, book, and verse, but through examples that Christ has set forth, what can I learn? What did Paul teach? What, man, principles, examples. I would hope. Can we turn to one more scripture? We'll close. 1 Timothy 10.31. 1 Timothy 10.31. 1 Corinthians 10.31. Did I say it wrong? I would hope that we would reach the point in our Christian maturity that it's not what do I have to do for God but what do I get to do for God? Not do I have to go to church, but man, do, when do we get to go to church? You know, what, not, not do I have to read my Bible, but man, I get to read my Bible again today. I got a few minutes at lunch. I'm going to read it, you know. Amen. How can I please the Lord? How can I be more like him? 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether therefore ye eat, or drink, or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. If we are saved and born again, we desire the milk, we desire the meat. And I love a good steak, but you know what? I like a tall glass of milk sometimes, too. It's good. I like it with cookies. Can't have it. But, man, when we love the Lord, all of a sudden, 
we want to draw an eye to all the principles. We want to understand exactly what he's teaching us. Not look for loopholes that we're not under the law and all this stuff. But understand what God's teaching us through principles. I want my children to learn through principles. Amen. Let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, I, I love you. I thank God for the, the principles that you've laid out so clearly in Scripture, Lord. That if we love you, we would try to follow that to the best that we can. I thank you, God, for your word. Lord, I thank you that you've laid it out so clearly if we want to study it.